Hey folks, welcome to another market internal review for December 18th, 2023. We're going to cover the past couple of uh, weeks, past couple of days, since I've not been able to create as many videos as uh, perhaps some of you have grown accustomed. I'm actually going to pivot over here to the daily chart real quick, looking at where we've been. So one of the last videos I posted, we were still down in this range, I believe, uh, maybe, maybe somewhere around here. And I said, I'm, I'm not really a believer in shorts here, even though you could make a case for it. Um, I just said that the, the, uh, the extreme amount of buying we've seen with, with the speed, we're probably not coming back to test some of these lower gaps at this point. Being that it's a, near the end of the year, we can understand some um, you know, more widely known seasonality metrics. Looking at all-time highs, uh, or or definitely higher up from from this range here, and this uh, it is held true. We've had uh, JPL come out and talk about rate cuts. We've seen some other numbers come out that look you know, quote unquote good whether you believe them or not, but lots of buying here. And now we've kind of hit this range. So I don't think I've covered it on this channel. I wrote an indicator a while back called candle levels and apologies. I, I actually had a video recorded that I needed to edit to um, show how to use the indicator. It actually is quite simple. You, you find the indicator on trading view. It's called candle levels. You add it to your chart and it acts as a drawing tool. So the first thing it does is it, and it's, I guess it confuses some people who, ha, um, who have used it. You add the indicator to your chart, just like you would any other indicator, but it actually will have a small prompt down here for you to pick a candle in time. So uh, you, you want to actually use your mouse or if you're on a touch screen, you know, use your finger and select the literal candle you want it to anchor off of. Kind of like anchored VWAP, you know, you got to pick. Uh, well, I guess sometimes you don't have to pick a candle, but I think there are some drawing tools in here where you do. But anyways, I picked this particular candle. If you've watched my videos, you know, I pick on these uh, these big candles. I think personally they create range, uh, something for the market to utilize. We know there's a lot of TA in the markets. We know there's so many things. And this one's pretty obvious in my opinion because it is near the the all-time high of spy and this one's pretty big i plotted it the candle levels indi indicator on this candle and these lines here represent the 50 percent there's two different ones the high low 50 percent and the open close 50 percent in this case they're real close sometimes they're they're actually decently different but in this case they're pretty close what what uh, became very apparent to me was a double rejection here of this 50 percent and uh, again, not to sound repetitive, but if you know me, you know I like, uh, well, love 50% measurements of all kinds of things. So this candle is from January 5th, 2022. Heading back all the way over here, I've used this to give me some kind of structure to help gauge sentiment. I'm sure I'm not the only one in the market doing this. <laughs> Turn off all the other crazy drawings, but... We've already seen a couple of strong pushes right up into 50% area, and yet you know we have a we have a drawback down here, back at the the lower end of that candle. And today, if we pivot back over to my market internal chart, you'll see we actually had a couple strong rejections of that 50% area twice towards the the end of the regular trading session today. So to back it up from a market internal standpoint, um, last week, so we had JPAL and uh, I mean, honestly, it's been pretty nice price action for my TWAP indicators, uh, both of the TWAP itself as well as the ranges. So as a general rule for myself, if price is above the prior first standard deviation zone. So this purple on um, the ranges indicator, I like to stay bullish unless we're massively overextended and I start to see some bearishness down here on MIT, I pretty much will stay bullish. Obviously if it's underneath, I try to stay bearish unless I see something wild 
<laughs> otherwise. And so we've had just a tremendous amount of days where we're over prior first standard deviation zone and lots of previous TWAP bounces. You can see uh, Thursday, December 7th, we had tons of them and all of those led to decent up moves hitting prior days high um, Friday here, kind of same thing. And you'll notice too that on a ton of these days, the New York market itself started with large gap uh, gap up with you know over 50 some percent price advancement volume you know decently following suit now some days we give it up other days we we keep it and either consolidate or or make some upward moves the other thing that's been really interesting is the study i wrote uh, and shared out for top holdings of spx and ndx so um, showing the advancement and decline of those. And you'll see quite often that tech is, uh, which is the histogram. So this is a, since there's 10 holdings I track, top 10 holdings, both of SPX and NDX. When you see the histogram full uh, bore, you know, high end like this, that's all 10 top 10 holdings of uh, NDX in advancement. And so just uh, recall, you know, it's over advancement if it it's considered advancement if it's over prior close. So that's what this represents here. The line specifically, the line plot is SPX top 10 holdings. There's a fair bit of overlap. If we look here, <laughs> NDX, uh, SPX, we've got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, uh, Meta's and both, Google's and yeah, Google's and both, both Goog and Google, the different class shares. Uh, Tesla is in both, but it diverges with Adobe, Berkshire, and United Health being in the uh, SPX and, and Adobe specifically being in NDX. In past weeks, right, we've, we've just seen lots of bullishness, um, lots of breakouts from prior day high range, even in the face of some pretty extreme bear tick, uh, even some extreme bear closures not enough to to even create new lows and uh gosh we had let's see yeah monday last week pretty much just a straight buy day after a little gap down um and then that following tuesday kind of same thing we we had a little gap down we come back test some mid range here also pre twop and we just bye 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 <laughs> we had some pretty nice uh bull tick that day um, what was interesting about Tuesday last week was uh, the, the the market as a whole actually had started on the bear side. We were at negative 50% advancement in volume, and that actually ended up being a dip buy. So that follows another rule of mine. I've, I've got plenty is, uh, you know, if we're at mid of range and we're on the upside, then that's another reason for me to stay more uh, upside focused until we break that and start to test uh, prior lows. So even though we've got technically, you know, red, or in my case, my color scheme, it's like a I don't know, turquoise or something. Uh, in, in case, you know, in, in the case of bearishness appearance on MIT, uh, I'm watching this new all-in-one candles indicator that I came out with to track uh, a little bit more nuanced, the add, the bold. Uh, I pretty much just use MIT for tick um, and then the dots for trend. But looking at this, right, it becomes apparent to me that, hey, yes, we're bearish on the indicators for the market, but the, the internals, but we're actually making an uptrend. So that's more bullish for me and that's a dip buy signal. So in this case, a lot of bullishness still even in that day for the new york stock exchange and then j pal effect kicks in <laughs> we got uh you know top holdings doing a flip from prior day and on j pal day they were definitely mixed we started with a medium advancement and then we kind of neutral out and then after j pal speaking about rate cuts then we we see just a, a tremendous amount of bull tech and look at the response for the New York market, right? The price advancement and volume is just, <laughs> it went mental, um, just insane amounts of, of bullishness, tons of volume and, and price advancement pouring into the market across all the indices. I mean, it was insane to watch. 
top holdings, of course, tech is responding in kind and just, you know, <laughs> running. Um, now, the candle levels indicator, I've pasted it on the internals chart here. And specifically with JPOW, we've got, I got a little alert here, but we broke into that range from January 22 and bounced it almost to the cent right on the low of that candle from the daily time frame. So that that's where I'm convinced, and that's why I continue to make this a standard part of my practice um, for just simple range, significant range that I use in my trading. So this was very interesting to me. The fact that we bounced it gave me more bullish sentiment, but obviously I have to understand or accept the fact that we're at highs on SPY. So it's not like I'm just going to jump right in to calls or, or whatever else. So the Thursday following JPOW basically expected just a bunch of chop. It's pretty typical if you've been in the markets through JPOW time frame. You probably will know or have been chopped up and painfully have a direct experience that trading after JPOW, trading before JPOW, trading during JPOW, usually if you're trying a directional trade, is a very painful experience because the spreads go wonky, the theta decay, the IV, uh, the day after, it's just a lot of weirdness. So that was mostly a boring day. Some bear tick, but overall still kept significant range. See, we are still above that daily candle from, from January 22. Following into the quad witching, we're, if you don't know what that is, I, I would certainly encourage you to go look it up, but that's where uh, multiple uh, varying expirations of options contracts are all expiring. And they've converged from weekly, monthly, quarterly, um, and uh, they, they've all converged into one date. And so there's usually just an insane amount of uh, liquidity flowing through the markets. Lots of new positions, lots of weird price movement as the designated market makers are um, trying to balance and, and keep hold of volatility. So Friday was a train wreck. If you were trying to directional trade, there was just absolutely nothing. Lots of balance from tick though. We had lots of 500 bull breaks, 500 bear breaks. And ultimately though, look where we consolidated here at lows was right above the, the Jan 22 candle low side. So even though New York market is rejecting midpoint here for ad and bold and heading down, SPY is still roughly staying. Tech is, is the biggest reason why we're, we're seeing still broad advancement across both of the holding top 10 holdings, both of those indices. That brings us into today. <laughs> Finally, we're at today. And you know we opened up with a decent sized gap, but not quite two bucks. And SPY is showing us that there's no interest in heading down into this gap. If we're not going to head down into the gap by midpoint of the session, I pretty much don't consider it as a possibility for the rest of the day. Interestingly, though, we definitely had struggled with trying to make any kind of directional movement. If you look at price and volume, we, we basically stopped at 40% across uh, price and volume. Price actually less less than that, but we did hold zero, uh, zero point. So bullish, but almost none. And the, the volume vol ratio was only 1.1 to 1. And advancement, I think the highest advancement I ever saw all day was, was maybe like 150, if that. So very weak overall, pretty much just a neutral theta decay type day. And, you know, in retrospect, I... I think after all the options work last Friday, we probably should expect mostly what we received today. I do expect a little bit more spice to come into the markets uh, as we head into the rest of this week and the rest of this month. Looking at the New York composite, we basically oscillated around prior day high. And I mean, maybe we can come test these lows again, but the fact that we kind of already did. This is where we had the gap. So you could consider this gap filled if you'd like. Pretty close. 
now if we hold this, depending on what futures do overnight, but I'm not really interested in, in an upside focus if we start to dip too low back through this gap area. I'd rather see us start to head higher now. Looking at the Qs. So Qs has already made a high. Um, I think there was a, I can't remember who wrote the article, but there was a, uh, a discussion of you know new highs already being printed on Nasdaq. So looking at the Qs, you know we've we definitely broke out uh, almost through third deviation on the monthly TWAP. We headed back down. We've oscillated, but now you see we've got this local top from our daily price action here, and we did have a breakout today. So I'm. I'm pretty confident that we'll see more upside um, before the end of this year. I would say 411. I don't know if we'll hit 4, 416, 418, 5, but definitely that's kind of my focus area is this range up here. Looking at the Dow, so the Dow is giving me some hesitation for bullishness, but as long as we see here tomorrow or Wednesday a, a nice breakout of this area, uh, this local top, then I'm pretty confident that'll help carry the rest of the market. We definitely need Dow to move upside if if the bulls are going to see any more action. We are still continuing to dra drag monthly TWAP up. We're holding these lows. We just got to break out of this high area here, 370, 373.5, I'll call it. Russell. We need small caps to, to, to start buying again, uh, but we've got that same kind of gap that we have on the New York market. We're seeing it right here on the Russ. Now the 50%, as we already discussed, you know, I like my 50%. We've tested the 50% of that range back on Friday, last Friday. So I'm hoping that uh, again, either tomorrow or Wednesday, definitely this week, I'm hoping we'll break this uh, high price here. And I should probably have an alert set for this. I'll do so now. So that'll be almost 200, almost 200 even. So definitely broke through the third deviation on monthly and um, just consolidating afterwards. But I don't really see anything alarming here. Also dragging monthly TWAP up. Looking over at SPY, it's kind of the same thing. It's definitely a more broad range, but as long as we can come back over 473, then I think we'll you know we'll continue upside. We got a monthly T up level 474.6, and obviously we got more range uh, higher up here. So looking over here at the RSIs for all the different spiders. We we definitely have picked up energy. Um, gosh, I think even uh, is that real? Yeah, communications. Pretty much everything has been on the uptrend <laughs> uh, for quite some time. Volume definitely over the average the past couple days. So that's that's good to see. If we're going to see advancements on spy, then we're going to need to see. Greater, greater than average volume, or at least that's typical. Looking at the growth stocks over 20-day average, so we're still hanging out over the 75% area, so no real concerns there. So I, I wouldn't really start to be concerned until we break back down around the 50% range and then see what we do from there. But um, we're, we're dragging all the SMAs up, and we also uh, just recently had the 50 cross the 100 so that's another common sign that uh, some use for uh, b uh, bullishness so overall um, been a pretty busy time so appreciate your patience waiting for for new videos um, but uh, yeah overall we're, we're we're real close to the end of the year i'm just considering you know if nothing else more consolidation I could maybe see a little pullback, but I, I'm really focused on uh, you know, the market looking for all-time highs on SPY. We've got low VIX still, not seeing any adjustment there. Put versus calls is still 0.71, so yeah, 12.47 on the VIX. So uh, yeah, really nothing else to say, folks. 
appreciate you sticking with me. We actually surpassed uh, 100 subscribers, so really can't thank everybody enough for subscribing and listening to me ramble. I'm really excited for 24. I've got some uh, some older indicators that I've made that aren't actually related to market internals, but uh, they're really I think they're really interesting indicators. And uh, I'm going to create some videos to show those off. And they're private indicators. They're not publicly listed on my TradingView profile, but um, perhaps, you know, if there's uh, enough interest, I can look into figuring out how best to share broadly. Hope you all have a fantastic uh, holiday season here as we end the month and head into the new year. Hope you've been having a great time trading. And as always, thank you for watching.